Hey everyone, welcome to another CTF Reddit video. Today we're going to be talking about a challenge from HackTM CTF, specifically the Crocodile challenge. Uh, it was a pretty fun web challenge where there were three steps to uh, solving this. First, we needed to bypass some rate limiting code to uh, create an account. Second, we needed to bypass a blacklist uh, filter using Beautiful Soup. And third, we needed to bypass content security policy. So the first step was creating an account. And this was tricky because they didn't activate your account. And the only place to actually activate your account was uh, here within the code to reset your password. So you could ask for a password reset. Uh, it would generate a four digit code, but it wouldn't give you the code. And so you needed to somehow brute force or find a SQL injection or something such that your account would be activated so you could even log into the platform. Um, in the, the code for resetting the password, uh, you give it your email and the code and it'll check, it, it'll do a user uh, email like and a user code like uh, query against SQL. Um, but there's two complications. First, uh, it's gonna check and make sure that the code is a digit. So we can't just do a SQL injection on code. Uh, it has to be only numeric characters. And second, we can't brute force it because it's going to do some rate limiting code where it saves your email into Redis and it'll check to see the number of requests you've made with that email. Um, so we can only make one guess for a code. But thankfully there is a bug here, uh, and it's because they're using the like query. In the SQL like query, you can append a uh, percent sign and it'll match any character, including no character. So if we were to set our email to, let's say, sjp at sjp.com, we can do the code 0000. And then on the second request, what we'll do is we'll just add a percent sign here, and we'll do the first code. And then on the next request, we'll add another percent sign, and we'll, add, we'll go to the next code. And so we can do this in brute force all uh, 10,000 codes, and eventually we'll be able to log in. Um, the actual code for doing this can be seen here. Um, we're just using request. We're saying, hey, generate a request code. And so this is how you would start the password reset flow. And then we're just gonna brute force all 9999 codes uh, using that reset password handler. And uh, every time we just add an extra percent sign. We'll do Python solve. Sweet, and we can see we were able to uh, log in with code 3215. Once we're logged into the platform, we're able to create post, hello world, and we give it YouTube video URLs. Um, just put that in. And then from here, we can have a admin bot view our post by clicking the report post button. The goal of this challenge is to view a post that belongs to the admin account. So if we were able to embed an XSS, we would be able to write some code that queries all the posts that belong to the admin and then specifically find the post that has the flag and send that to an endpoint we control. So this is the code to create a post. We can see it's defining a blacklist of tags we're not allowed to use. It's gonna parse our content using beautiful soup. And if any, if our content has any of these tags, it's just going to reject it. Um, thankfully, we've seen this challenge before. Uh, this was during Iris CTF uh, in a challenge written by Seraphin where we had to bypass this. And the trick really wasn't too bad. Um, we just, in beautiful soup, this, it'll think this entire thing is a comment, whereas a browser will allow, um, know that this is actually a script. So again, beautiful soup thinks that this entire structure is a comment, whereas the browser will allow stuff in here. Um, and we're allowed to use comments, so we can put whatever we want in here. So that's how we do the first bypass. The second bypass is bypassing content security policy. So sadly, during the CTF, I did not bypass this. Um, and so I'm referring to a write-up by uh, Zeyu um, here, where they talked about how they were able to find an endpoint on YouTube. Um, I searched all over the place for this JSONP, but I couldn't find it. The CSP uses three different directives, a default source, a object source, and a base URI. Um, both the base URI and the object source are set to none. And so the default source is just gonna handle uh, everything. So script tags, image tags, uh, style sheets, all that stuff. So we're allowed to load content from YouTube, Google reCAPTCHA, gstatic, uh, reCAPTCHA again. So the JSONP endpoint that Zay was able to find is on youtube.com slash oembed, and it accepts this callback parameter. And so we're able to use this to bypass CSP because CSP says you're only allowed to load JavaScript from youtube.com and a couple of other locations. And here we're able to essentially create our own JavaScript files. And so we're able to embed whatever we want here, like we can do an exploit and then an alert and then you know, whatever callbacks we want, and all of this code is gonna be executed. So using uh, this JSONP, we can construct our payloads. So we need two different payloads. This is the first one. So this is how we bypass beautiful soup. 
Then we're gonna inject the script tag. Uh, it's the YouTube with the JSONP callback. So this will bypass CSP. And then from there, um, you, normally you put this all in one line. I'm just splitting it out. We're gonna fetch the profile, take the profile, turn it into text. And then we're going to take all the contents from the profile page and send it to this webhook site. And our response from this, when we send it to the admin bot, is this. Uh, this is that HTML page of the profile, and specifically it has the post ID, and this is the post ID with the flag. And so then we just do the exact same thing again. We just create another post. We embed this XSS. This time it has the post ID. Uh, we send it back to the webhook site, and uh, if everything works out, we get the flag here. So HackTM example. So overall, very fun challenge. Uh, I, I had a lot of fun with it. I love stringing together those different bugs. And uh, also thanks to uh, Zayu for their write-up. Um, helping us mere mortals find those tricky JSONP endpoints. Um, yeah, that's it. Cheers.